Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our live stream service on Sunday morning, uh, 21st of June. It's lovely to welcome you here to our building in Strain Presbyterian. Um, but we know this is not just for Strain, we know this is for the whole church family. So if you're joining us from um, another church, you're very welcome this morning as we come together to praise and to worship God just in uh, the continuing different way that we're doing it. So in the spirit of being different, let me start off not with announcements or birthday blessings, but let me start off by reading something to you. Uh, I don't know what you thought of this, the weather this past week. Uh, a lot of us thought that maybe it'd be good all week, and then we had lots of rain and uh, different wind and, and all happening as well. So these verses seem very appropriate, just as they remind us at the very start of this service about God, who he is, and what he's done for us. So Psalm 104, the, the first three verses say this. O Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed, you are robed with honor and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out a starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride on the, wind, the wings of the wind. Amazing verses just reminding us of how God has created all of this that's around us. How he is great, how he is wonderful, how he is in control. Um, how he is our heavenly father. Just an appropriate way to start this Sunday, which is of course Father's Day. Um, so happy Father's Day to you all. I know this will be a day of mixed emotions for a number of folks um, in one way or another. Uh, so just to say that this day, as it's Father's Day, we do remember everybody. So let's just pause right at the very start and let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather again on Father's Day. Lord, as we said, this, this is the day that reminds us what you have done for us. Also, this day might be a, a day of mixed emotions for many folks. So Lord, for those who maybe are sad today, just be with them and be near them. For those who struggle, Lord, just help them through this day. And Lord, just remind us in everything, ultimately, that you are the perfect heavenly Father for all of us. So Lord, we thank you, now and always, in Christ's name we pray, amen. So good morning, folks. It's lovely to have you all joining. It's lovely to see the messages starting to bounce up on screen this morning. Um, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, if there are any further birthday blessings, uh, I will try and keep an eye on the screen, uh, just to, to catch any that come along. But let me do these couple of announcements that I have, first of all. Just to remind you uh, that for our folks here, you would have got a, a letter um, this past week, hopefully, and you've received it. Uh, just keeping you in touch with everything that's going on, but also reminding us as well that on this Thursday, which is the 25th, from 10 till 12, again, we have um, a drop-off for food bank and church envelopes. So if you have anything that you wish to drop down, that is the time to do it, Thursday morning from 10 to 12. Um, just a little reminder from Food Bank, they particularly need things like tinned meats, tinned meals. Um, when you think about hams and chili con carne and sausages and things like that. Uh, they also need rice and pasta. Probably something that we often forget about when it comes to Food Bank. Um, on storehouse is the lack of toiletries and cleaning materials. We forget that they also provide that uh, to families as well. So if you can pick up any toiletries or cleaning materials, toilet rolls, kitchen rolls, things like that as well, it would be very much appreciated. And like I say, if you drop them down here on Thursday morning between 10 to 12, or if you can't get down, if you want to let your elder know so that your elder can lift them for you, um, then that can be arranged. Also, just to say that I'm sure a number of people uh, this past week have seen the announcement uh, from the executive just talking about how they're starting to ease lockdown. They did talk about how they felt that from the week beginning Monday the 29th of June that churches would be able to start and open again, which was lovely to hear, but we still don't have any details. So I know there are a number of meetings taking place this week with the executive and it is hoped that by Friday that there will be some more direction on what that means 
Uh, when can we actually meet to do church service? When we can, what will the restrictions be upon us? Um, what will the limitations be? Um, so we are working towards that. So folks, from the point of view of uh, strain, of Cardor Valley Freenus and Valley Black, I know that the elders are um, working hard to, to get things um, sorted. So I'm just writing down a birthday here as I speak. It's great when the Feliz we met messages come, come in. Um, if and when we know things, we will be passing them um, on to yourselves. Uh, what we intend to do is get the churches led out um, as best that we can to, to see how many we can accommodate and where we can accommodate. Um, once we know all that and we have all the directions, I will post a little walkthrough video from the different churches just to show you how church looks inside, um, how seating's going to be, how things will work, um, the flow through the buildings, just to let you know in advance so that you know. And again, we will make contact through various means, um, through our elders, through phone calls and such like and all as well, just to keep you informed about what is going on. So like I say, folks, as and when we know what's going on, we will pass that on to yourself. Um, that's all the announcements that I have at the minutes. Let me do a couple of birthday blessings. There's one still on the screen that I was scribbling down. So let me just read it out. Alison Patterson, um, birthday tomorrow. Hannah um, Hild as well, birthday tomorrow also. Happy birthday for them. I know there's another birthday this week coming up, which is Jessica Scott. Your birthday is this Thursday coming. And I know that uh, Roberta Wilson, you had a birthday on Thursday last. Uh, the way it was put to me was Roberta was 21 again, but I didn't ask how many times she's been 21. Uh, but for all of those folks, happy birthday. Uh, if I miss any, because some pop up after this, apologies, I will try and pick them up again next week. Um, but just let's pause and let's pray and give thanks. Father, we thank you that we can gather as a church family in this different way. And that doesn't stop us from celebrating and giving thanks. And we think particularly about birthdays. So, Father, we do remember Hannah and Alison, Roberta and Jessica. We thank you for them. We thank you for birthdays past, birthdays that are coming. We just ask that you would continue to bless them and their families, be close to them at this time. Lord, it's strange how we celebrate birthdays at this time because of social distancing. But, Lord, thank you that we can still connect. Thank you that we are still blessed by you, no matter what is going on. We ask that you do bless these people, bless their families, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Well, folks, it is Sunday again. Hard to believe I know that it has gone by so quickly. Hard to believe that it's another week that has passed and we're approaching the end of June. Boys and girls, how's the schoolwork going? Is it going well? Have you maybe finished it? Are you one of the fortunate ones who all the work has finished or are you still having to do some tough if it is it's, it's not nice sure it's not but hey very soon you'll all be get, able to, to meet up with friends again hopefully uh, and get back into some sort of routine uh, for us in church it's the same we just don't know what's going on but we still like to talk to one another don't we and this is my time to talk to you boys and girls as i've been doing every week we've been talking about different fruits so I have some more fruit with me this morning. Now, let me give you some clues. The particular fruit that I have with me is two colours. Half of it is green and half of it is like a, a dark red colour. You can eat this fruit or you could squeeze it to make some juice, different types of juice as well. Sometimes this fruit has seeds in it. Some people like to buy the seedless version of it. I wonder, have you guessed yet which fruit it is? I'll lift it out and let you see. These are the green ones. There you go. There's a lovely bunch of green grapes. I wonder, do you like grapes? Parents, adults, do you like some grapes as well? 
um, you know, grapes are a, an amazing fruit. When you think about that, whenever they start to grow, lots of other fruit on trees, you, you get them one at a time. And sometimes, you know, we used to grow apple trees. We had apple trees at home. You grew apples. And sometimes you'd be very fortunate if a tree even had one apple on it. One apple all by itself. Or a branch might just have the one apple because you didn't prune it right. And then maybe the next year you get lots of apples on it. Well, you think of some, some trees where fruit grows on its own. But grapes don't grow on their own. Whenever they start to grow, they are in a group or a bunch. And they grow with one another, and then they are picked with one another, and they stay with one another. And whenever you eat them, um, one grape is never enough. You want to have more and more. It's a bit like some of the adults with sweets. If you open a packet of sweets, they can't just have one or a box of chocolates. They have to have three or four. It's the same with grapes. You know, you have one that makes you thirsty for another one or hungry for another one, and you have to have some more. Grapes remind us of ourselves in different ways. Well, first of all, grapes are different. So there's some green ones. There's some red ones. There's even some more in there as well. Um, these ones happen to be seedless, but some grapes have seeds in them. So you get a variety in them. They're all different, but they're all grapes. And they can all be eaten, or you can press them to make grape juice. You can even make wine from them, as in you think of the Bible, and we talk about wine in the Bible. You can make lots of things with them. But they come in groups, and they're meant to grow in groups, and they're meant to, to be picked that way as well, picked in bunches. You know, grapes are mentioned in the Bible right the way back in the Old Testament, Whenever God's people were looking at the land that they were going to occupy, um, there's one part that talks about 12 spies being sent out. And spies come back with reports of the land. And some of them say, it's flowing with milk and honey. There's loads of, there's, it's very fertile land. Others say, there's great big giants there. And we're never going to be able to get that land. And other people talk about, other spies talk about the bunches of grapes, great big bunches of grapes, so juicy, so fertile. That's the first reference in the Bible. But grapes remind us of us. You see, whenever we start to read in the Bible about um, Christians, about what happened whenever Jesus went back to heaven and how as people met together, they weren't alone, but they were in groups. If you can get mum or dad or granny or granddad or somebody to read to you, or read it for yourself, the, the start of the book of Acts, particularly in Acts chapter 2, it talks about how all the Christians or all the believers, um, different phrases, different Bibles, are, are meeting together. They're not on their own. They stay together and they look after one another. They help each other. If anyone needs food, they give it to them. If anyone needs clothes or money, they give it to them. And then every time they meet together, they eat together and they share together as well. They look after one another. They're in bunches. And that's what grapes teach us. Grapes teach us that we're not meant to be alone as Christians, but we're meant to look out for one another, help each other, and support each other. And if we do that, then things go so much better. We know we're never alone. We know we always have that help. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we always have God's help. So boys and girls, next time you see a bunch of grapes, please remember um, the grapes remind us of us, us as a church, as Christians, and how we look after each other, and how we support each other, uh, and how we're always there for one another. So you think you can remember that for me? Great. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that we are not alone. Thank you that we have each other. And thank you, most importantly, that we have you, that you are there for us, that you support us at everything. Lord, as we read the Bible, as we read your word, help us to understand what it means to be a Christian, what it means to look out for one another, what it means to help one another, what it means not to be alone. And help us to look out for those who are around us, to support them and to help them. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening so well. Um, I'm going to read something else from the Bible. Again, it's in the Old Testament. If you want to sit and listen, that's great. Um, I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 7 to 15. And this is taken from the New Living Translation. 
And again, this is um, God speaking to somebody called Moses. Uh, so it is. And it's at a time whenever something's happened. So I don't know if you can see over my shoulder here. Um, you can see the drop cloth from the pulpits. And on that drop cloth, if you look very carefully, is a burning bush. So this is a passage taken from that time. Whenever Moses is in the wilderness, he sees a bush that's burning, but it's not disappearing. It's not being burnt up, turning to ash. The bush is still there and it's full of flames and he can't figure out what's going on. He goes over to it and he's told to take off his sandals because the ground in which he's standing is holy ground and God wants to speak to him. And this is God speaking. Exodus 3 verse 7. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am, I am aware of their sufferings. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt and into their own fertile and spacious land. This is a land flowing with milk and honey, a land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me. And I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, The God of your ancestors has sent me, they will ask me, What is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Amen. We ask that God would bless this reading of his word. Just before we come to look at this passage and to look at what um, our series is going to be over the next few weeks. Let's pause and let's pray together. Let's pray um, this week for church sessions um, right the way across our island as they start to prepare for the possible reopening of churches. Um, let's pray for wisdom as we get things set up and organized. Let's pray for our executive as they do that as well, that God would guide them and lead them so that uh, we would be able to meet in sensible and safe ways. And let's pray for everybody who will come out to church or normally would be in church. Those who are still shielding will not be able to meet at first. We know that because shielding continues until the 31st of July. Um, a lot of people might be nervous about coming out to church. So let's just pray that as we meet together, whenever it does start, that it will be safe, and that people would feel safe and not be able to do it in a way that supports and encourages one another. So let's pause and let's pray at this time. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are in control at all times. Thank you that it's not us, Father, but you. But Lord, we, we are guided by you and we are led by you. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray for, for wisdom and for guidance for our leaders at different levels um, in different parts of our church community and our, and, our, and, our, and our political leadership as well. Lord, we all need that guiding hand from you. And that's what we pray for this morning. We ask that you would give wisdom to our political leaders as they meet this week to discuss and to work out how we start to ease lockdown again. Um, this next step, how we start to meet as churches. Uh, we ask that you would guide them in that discussion. 
guide them in that for, for that they would give the right advice and have the right wisdom. Lord, for sessions up and down the country, uh, north and south of the border, just be with them as they prepare for this time as well. Guide our sessions as they think about how to do this in a safe uh, and controlled way. As we think about our people coming into church and how they will feel, help us to be conscious of that, Lord, and just help us to be considerate. Lord, for those at first who will not be able to meet because they're still shielding, just be with them. Lord, this has been a difficult time for those people who are shielding, not being able to get out, not being able to do very much at all. We pray for each and every one of them from, from a mental health point of view, from a physical point of view, from their emotional state, Lord, just be with them and help them. For those of us who do meet in church, Lord, help us again to be careful and sensible. Help us to show wisdom, particularly those of us in leadership, Lord, that we wouldn't be rash, but that we'd be considerate of others. And at all times that we would make sure that we are doing everything for the right reasons and not for, for selfish reasons. Lord, we just need you with us. We want you with us, particularly today on Father's Day when we think about you as our Heavenly Father. We just ask that you would help us, look after us, guide us and direct us. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let me just get a drink of water. <clears throat> I'm wondering, as you were growing up, did you ever have a nickname? Was there a name that your friends gave you? Was it a funny name? Maybe it was a name that sort of kind of poked fun at you. Uh, maybe it was a name that you were proud of. It's a cool name, you know. I'm, I'm one of the gang now. I've got a nickname. Maybe you didn't have a nickname. Maybe you felt left out. Um, maybe you have a name like mine. Um, and depending on how people refer to you, it just shows how long they've known you for. When I get my full title of Jeffrey, I know people have known me for a very long time, um, whereas most people call me Jeff. You know, there's something about names, isn't there? And about how we call people and how we refer to them. Um, even for our spouses, you know, we, we, we call them different names at different times. Uh, and maybe the kids cringe whenever we do that. Maybe they laugh, maybe they, they join in. Um, even for, for, for kids and parents, at times maybe you have different names for, for parents. Uh, it's Father's Day today. Maybe you call your father father, maybe you call him dad, you might call him pops, you might refer to them as the old man. Um, you know, there's, there's different ways of calling people, and it's the same with mums as well. Um, you know, we're, we're all different, we all have these different names. This passage that we've read together starts to introduce us to a name which God is known by. And it's a name or a phrase which continues then into the New Testament. The phrase and the name I am. And Jesus uses that phrase a number of times in the New Testament. Um, there's about eight times that he, he uses that in John's Gospel. So over the next number of weeks, we're going to start and look at a series in I am. And what, are, what do the I am's mean? What's Jesus referring to in them? And how does it link into us today? But let's look, first of all, at the start of that. Because this is Father's Day. Now, sometimes when we think of fathers, maybe we have good memories. Maybe we have bad memories. Maybe we have happy memories, or maybe our memories are sad. Everything is coloured by how we get on in life. But let me say from the very start, God is the perfect father. He is the one who knows us so well, the one who understands us better than we understand ourselves, the one who really wants to look after us and care for us, and the one who can do that. So whenever we talk about Heavenly Father, maybe that word Father is difficult for you, but please try to think of that word Father in the purest, most perfect sense of the word somebody who loves you unconditionally, somebody who ne will never harm you or hurt you, somebody who will always care for you. That's what it's all about. The background of this passage is, as Moses comes 
Moses being brought up in Egypt. The children of Israel are living in Egypt. So to a certain extent, they've adopted the customs of the Egyptians. They've adopted the ways of the Egyptians. That's really all they know. They are far away from God. And even though they, they understand a little bit about who God is, because they cry out to God. It says here, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people. I've heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. So even though they're, they're crying out to God, they still don't really understand. And Moses shows that lack of understanding. Whenever God says, I'm sending you to Pharaoh and I'm sending you to my people and, and, and you will tell them that go and you must lead my people out of Egypt. And he said, but, but who am I? And if I go to the people and say, the God of your ancestors has sent me, what is your name? When they're going to ask me, what's your name? The reasoning behind that, or the, the story behind that is, in the days of the Egyptians, it was thought that if you were um, powerful or important, and if you were communicating with, with the gods, or whoever your god was, that your god had a secret name. And if, the, if God really cared about you, if your God really cared about you, your God would give you that secret name so that if you ever needed to, to use it, that you could use it. If somebody ever questioned you, then you could say, oh, my God is, and you would use this name. And even in, as the Egyptians thought about the afterlife, as you journeyed through the afterlife, um, you'd be asked at times, well, who do you belong to? And you'd be able to use the secret name of your God, and that would get you further through the afterlife as such, and a more important place. So Moses has this idea in his head. Uh, and whenever it comes to, he says to God, what is your name? Um, then what should I tell them? A lot of Bibles, when you look at them, you will see the, the passage that says, I am who I am, printed in large letters. And there's a sense in which, as God says this, he's a bit frustrated with Moses. What do you mean you're asking what my name is? What do you mean, what am I going to say to the people? I am who I am. I am God. You know, as God says that, you can just imagine, you can just picture a booming voice saying, I am God. And it's nearly as if it's, hang on here, wait a minute, Moses. Look around you. Open your eyes. First of all, you're standing in front of a bush that is burning but not being burnt up. Can you see any ash falling off this bush? No. Is the bush still there? Yes. Will the bush still be there whenever the flames stop? Yes. Moses, open your eyes. L look upwards. Look at the sky around you. Who do you think made that? At night time, Moses, whenever you're out minding the sheep, Whenever you're out in the hillside and you look up and you see all the stars, who do you think put the stars there? As you navigate your way around using those stars, who put them in the place so you could do that? Who gives you the sun by day? Who sends the rain to water the ground to let the grass grow so that the sheep can feed? In fact, who thought of the sheep? Who made the sheep? Who made the grass? Who put all of that in place? I am who I am. That's what God is saying. He's saying to Moses, you know, hang on here a minute, Moses. I am God. Do you not realize that? We live in a world today that quite often doesn't realize who God is or doesn't want to realize who God is, doesn't want to realize what God has done for us, what God continues to do for us, and he continues to do it freely for us. A God who simply wants us to trust him and follow him. You know, the, the sense of this is, you know, I am who I say I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And say this to the people, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. God is who he is. We can't grasp the concept of who God is. We can't grasp it in our minds because we are people who are born, we live for a while on this earth and we die. We have a cycle to our life. We can't imagine what God is. 
Because God is so much bigger than us. Let me give you a little bit of reference to this from the Bible. Deuteronomy, God says this. Understand, therefore, that the Lord is, the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant to a thousand generations. He lavishes his love on those who love him and obey his commands. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him. God's scary, you might think. And we talk about having a holy fear or a reverent fear of God. God is all-powerful. God spoke it and the world came into being. God spoke it and we were made. Everything around us was made. God is the one who put the seasons in place. He created everything that we see. God is the one who wants us to follow him. But he says he'll destroy us if we don't. That's scary. You know, and we have to remember that God is far superior to us. We have to have that reverent fear. But God also loves us and cares for us. John 3, verses 16 and 17 say this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. God is a God who loves us, who cares for us. God is a God who doesn't want to condemn us, but he wants to save us. He wants us to be with him. But when I said we can't get our head around who God is, it's very true. I mean, Genesis, Genesis 1 verse 8. Um, I, am, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. I am the one, who, sorry, um, Gen, or Revelation 1 verse 8. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Mighty One. God is eternal. God has no beginning and no end. That is something which is hard for us to grasp. Because so much of what we do, we think about earth and we think about what we call mortal things, that we do have a beginning and an end. But God has no beginning and no end. God also, in our terms, is invisible. We can't see him. In John 1, it says, no one has ever seen God, but the unique one, that's Jesus, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. God is invisible. We can't see him. Jesus came to this earth as his son, as part of God. Again, that's a concept which is very hard to grasp. To show us the nature of God, to show us how he cares for us, to show us his love, to show us what it means to follow God. That's why it's Jesus who we have the I Am series about. It's Jesus who says different things like, I am the good shepherd, I am the light of the world. And we're going to explore what they mean because that's how we see God is through Jesus. But we need to grasp, first of all, that God is God. That he is incredible. That he is amazing. That he is something that someone, some being that we cannot get our heads around. Our brains are just not capable of that. He is someone who asks us to trust him. That's what it means whenever God says, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. 
That name Yahweh appears time and time again in our Bible. You will quite often not see the name Yahweh. In the Old Testament, you will see the name the Lord, and it's all written in block capitals. That's Yahweh. Um, the Jews don't use the name Yahweh. They're scared that if they use God's name, they'll be struck down. So whenever the Bible was first translated from um, the, the, the Hebrew into, it was the King James in those days, out of respect for the Jewish nation who lent scrolls, the name Yahweh was replaced by the Lord. And even as they write it, the Jews, they, they changed the, the, the pronunciation or the accents, little jots and vowels, so that they're not even writing God's name. That's how scared they are of the name Yahweh. That they'll use it incorrectly and be struck down. But God simply says, I am who I am. Just trust me. Do we truly trust God as our heavenly father? I mean, I said at the very start, for some people the word father, you know, the image of father is good. For others, it's bad. It's very hard for some people to trust somebody who calls himself father. For others, it's easy to trust. God is different. God is the one who loves us and who cares for us. Yes, he's scary in that we can't fully get our heads around who he is. And he says that he wants us to follow him. He says that if we don't follow him, we are condemned. But he's also the one who sent Jesus to be our savior, to die on the cross. And as John 3, 17 says, God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. God is the one who gave up everything for you and me to save us. Wow. That's the ultimate image of a father. Somebody who's prepared to give up everything to save their child. If you are a father, you'll know that sort of feeling. And it's scary. You get scared for your children. And if you were asked to do something for them, you, you, certainly you would do it, but you might still be scared. God's not scared. God doesn't know that sort of fear because God is in control and God wants us to trust him. So over these next few weeks, we're going to start and explore the I Am series. What does Jesus mean whenever he says those phrases in the Gospel of John? But let's remember they all go back to the ultimate I Am. I am who I am. I am God's. The God who made you, the God who loves you, the God who cares for you. So at the minute, as lockdown still continues, and as we're scared about coronavirus, and as we're unsure about the future, maybe you're unsure about your job, you're just not sure what, ways are, what way things are going, you can rely upon your heavenly Father. He is there for you in everything. He will carry you. He will hold you. He will walk with you. He will never leave you. I am who I am. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are exactly who you say you are. I am who I am. Thank you that you are in control, that you made us, that you love us, that you sent Jesus. Lord, help us just to have that simple faith of trusting you. Lord, help us just to place our lives in your hands, knowing that there's no better place to put them. And Lord, may you hold us close and hold us tight. Father, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Well, folks, thanks for joining with me this morning. It's been great to have you. Um, if you watch us later on, again, thank you for joining with us. Or if you're watching it later on in the week on YouTube as well, um, thank you for joining in. And please remember that as developments happen this week, once we as a church know what's going on, we will pass that information on to you as quickly as we can. We will share that with you and we will then let you know how church will work and what dates we will be starting back again um, just as it becomes apparent to us. So for the rest of this week, I just pray that you um, take care, 
that you know God's blessing um, that you stay safe and for the dads out there um, I trust that today you get a bit spoilt hopefully you'll get off dish duties um, and that you enjoy your day so take care God bless see you all again soon bye